is the Ravens Rundown, and I am your fearless leader, Tyler Jones, here with you. Appreciate you joining us. On today's show, we have the latest Baltimore Ravens news and rumors, those involving Mel Kiper Jr.'s latest mock draft, who he has the Ravens selecting. Also, we have some fresh trade rumors involving DeAndre Hopkins, one NFL executive says that the Ravens are one of the most likely landing spots. We'll explain all of that and more in just a few moments from right now. Before we do that, though, our question of the day. Who should the Ravens draft at number 22 overall? And by the way, this is the 22nd pick. I know the Dolphins are frauds and got their pick taken away. And it's not the 23rd, it's the 22nd, just so we're all on the same page. But who do you think the Ravens should select with that selection? Let me know in the comment section. We'll get started with today's show. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit in Mel's mock draft to the last four picks before the Ravens selection. And here's what the picks are, 18 through 21. As you can see, some pretty decent talent goes off the board with three straight defensive picks before the Ravens make their selection at 22. And this is a very important pick for the Ravens because – Remember, they only have five picks in this year's draft, so they have to get every single one of these right. Uh, Very important to get this done uh, here in this draft. So with that, who do they take according to Mel Kuyper Jr.? Who does he project them grabbing with that 22nd selection? Dun-dun-dun, dun-dun-dun-dun. With the 22nd pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Quinton Johnston. Wide receiver from TCU. I love the pick. I like this idea of Quentin Johnston going to the Baltimore Ravens to fill a much-needed position at wide receiver. Here is more on why Mel Kuyper Jr. chose Quentin Johnston to go to the Ravens. I think Jackson will be back. That's referring to Lamar, obviously. Potentially on a franchise tag, in which case... He needs someone to catch passes. Baltimore still hasn't gotten its receiving core right. It ranked last in the league in receiving yards by wideouts, 1,517. Rashad Bateman, a first-rounder in 2021 who has struggled with injuries, has just three touchdowns in 18 career games. Johnston could help the Ravens stretch the field. He averaged 17.8 yards per catch for the Horned Frogs this season at 6'4". He's still developing as a route runner, and he's a physical mismatch once he gets his body into defensive backs and leaps for the ball. Jackson could use Johnston's length in the red zone. I love the pick by Mel. Mel, you did a really good job, my friend, with this selection for Baltimore at 22 here. I have been preaching this for the last few weeks. I will continue to do so throughout this offseason. That selection by Baltimore at 22 overall needs to be a wide receiver. And Quentin Johnston is just that guy that fits that mold of what the Ravens are looking for. Mel has him as the number two receiver in this draft, number 12 player overall. That's good value at 22. Three-year starter at TCU helped the Horn Frogs go to the college football playoff for the first time in school history. Go back and watch the highlights of what he did against Michigan. He was absolutely outstanding for the Horn Frogs this year. I'm excited about what he brings to the table. I think he's a natural fit for this Ravens team, potentially. So I want to know from you guys here, when you see all this about Quentin Johnston, we know the Ravens are going to be looking at receivers, and there's plenty of options in this draft. What do you think about the idea of Quentin Johnston coming to the Baltimore Ravens. I would grade the pick an A myself. I like what Mel did with this selection here. Do you agree with Mel? Get out those red pins. Give me a grade for how Mel did with the selection for Baltimore. A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know in the comments section below. DeAndre Hopkins, could he also be joining the Baltimore Ravens? Now, I've sat on this show before, and I will reiterate once again, just because... You draft a receiver in the first round doesn't mean you still can't get DeAndre Hopkins or get another receiver in free agency or trades this offseason. I think you can mix and match here. It's not just a situation where you have to buy one because in actuality, you're going to need multiple guys to fix this receiving core. And although the assets are limited in what the Ravens could do 
to trade for DeAndre Hopkins? An NFL executive has told the folks at Espen, uh, according to Jeremy Fowler, that the Ravens are one of the favorites to land the Cardinals wide receiver. Let's see what Fowler had to say. In Hopkins, the Ravens would be getting a true vertical threat for Lamar Jackson, who many coaches say needs a rangy target. If Baltimore is serious about keeping Jackson, it's time to get him more firepower on the outside. You notice the theme here? Whether it was DeAndre Hopkins or Quentin Johnston, we're all talking about the same thing of finding a vertical threat for Lamar. I mean, you look at D-Hop, three-time All-Pro selection, currently with Arizona, had a great run there with the Houston Texans, setting three franchise records there. But this Arizona team, they are in complete rebuild mode. New head coach, new GM coming in. Uh, their quarterback, Kyler Murray, is going to miss most of next year with a torn ACL. They're starting over. DeAndre Hopkins, he's on the back end of his prime now. Needs to capitalize on what he has left on the finish of his career. Baltimore could be the right place for him to do that. With the limits when it comes to assets for the Ravens, that's where things get tricky. Obviously, there's a need there, and it'd be exciting to have him here, but I don't necessarily know if you have what it takes to pull off a deal like this, not to mention the limitations when it comes to the salary cap as well. What say you? Trade for DeAndre Hopkins. Yes? No. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Let me know. Do you want to trade for DeAndre Hopkins and bring him to the Ravens? Got a great deal that we're offering Ravens fans. You can get a Ravens jersey in all different colors, shapes, and sizes, whatever you're feeling. If you want to be rocking out with your flock out, represent Lamar Jackson, or if it's Marcus Williams or Mark Andrews, maybe you want to show off a Ray Lewis jersey because you're an OG like that. Whatever you may be, we got plenty of options for all generations of Ravens fans, and you can get yours today at chatsports.com slash Ravens jersey. It's simple as that. Chatsports.com slash Ravens jersey to get yours today. You'll be glad you did. Chatsports.com slash Ravens jersey. Now, here's what I would do. If I'm Lamar Jackson, and you're in the midst of these contract negotiations, and, you know, you, you have leverage now that you didn't necessarily have last offseason, now is the time for Lamar to demand help. He has some weight here where he can say, not only am I in a position, if you're Lamar, where you're going to have a say in who the next offensive coordinator is going to be. At least that's what they tell us anyway. You should be able to have to say, have some pull and say, I need better help than what I got. Because when you look at this Ravens receiving core, I mean, it's bad. It might be with, and this I don't think is a stretch to say, this might be the worst receiving core in the National Football League, in all honesty. Rashad Bateman, I know he's shown flashes, but he can't stay healthy. Demarcus Robinson was a guy that got caught by the Raiders last year. Devin DuVernay has been more of a return specialist. Sammy Watkins is, I think, older than my dad. And then, you know, Tylen Wallace hasn't done anything. James Prochet has been a little sus. I mean, th there's not great options in this receiving core. It has to improve. The numbers last year, Mark Andrews had a down year, still led the Ravens in receiving. But beyond that, it was bad. D-Rob should never be your leading wide receiver on any, under any circumstance. I'm sorry. That's not a knock on Demarcus Robinson. It's just the reality of where things are at. This group badly needs help. Now, you do have a great tight end room. Besides Mark Andrews, Isaiah likely had a good rookie year. Charlie Kolar should be healthy next year. You have options there. You can use 12 personnel and get the most out of those, that tight end room, but you got to have wide receivers to get the football too. The numbers from D-Hop the last four years. Think about this. DeAndre Hopkins had a six-game suspension last year for PEDs, which I still have questions about. There's a chance that his PED suspension could have been bogus anyway. Even with that said, the guy still had over 700 yards receiving and three touchdowns last year. And his quarterback was gone at the end of the year with that ACL injury. Year before that, 572 yards. He had 1,400 yards in 2020, 1,100 yards in 2019. DeAndre Hopkins still has something there, and the Ravens would be lucky to have him. So let me ask you this before we go, before we wrap up today's show. What is your confidence level that management 
fixes this receiving core that badly needs fixing. We know this team is stacked defensively, and they have some good players all across the board here. The roster is pretty solid heading into 2023. But will they get it done? Will they fix this receiving court? Rate for me your confidence level that they'll do it, 1 through 10 in the comment section below. Folks, we have a very entertaining offseason ahead of us here on the Ravens Rundown. We're counting down to the draft. we got free agency, trades, and more, all covered in one place this is the place to be. If you're a member of the flock, if you love your Baltimore Ravens, you got to subscribe to the channel right now. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. And I will see you next time right here on the Ravens Rundown. Have a great day.